Howdy, everybody. My name is Christopher, and I'm here to introduce you to the SiteJet Builder. SiteJet Builder is a beginner-friendly, what-you-see-is-what-you-get, drag-and-drop, low-code-to-no-code website editor. Today, I'm going to demonstrate the power and ease of this builder by creating a new site. The first step you're going to do is choose your template. You can start with a blank template, but we have over 140 pre-made ones available, with more being added constantly for you to choose from. I recommend starting off with one of these while you're first learning. As I said earlier, this is a what you see is what you get builder. Anything you can see here can be changed or edited on the spot. As you mouse over the different elements of the site, you can see how these pieces are organized and make changes as needed. If I want to change this headline, all I need to do is double click on the headline element and change the text. I'm going to change coach headline to healthy living. When you select an element, the settings for it show up in the sidebar to the left. The options will change depending on the element. I can also grab an element and drag it around to new positions. And you'll be able to see the green line change as it moves, so I can make sure it goes where I want. You can undo any action by hitting Ctrl Z or utilizing the undo and redo buttons here. Speaking of shortcuts, there are a bunch of SiteJet Builder specific keyboard shortcuts you can take advantage of to streamline your experience. You can view them by pressing Ctrl K or by going to the shortcuts section in our side menu. We have seen how easy it is to drag and drop or edit an element. So let's see what we have available to use when fleshing out our website. Elements are the smallest individual pieces that make up a website. For example, here you can see our basic elements like headlines, text boxes, and images. If I want to add an image to my site, I grab the image element here and drag it to where I want it. I don't really want this image right now, so I'm going to undo the decision and move on. We have a lot of options for pre-made containers utilizing these elements that will help you create your perfect website. Before I start changing up more, I'm going to upload the logo for my site. I do this by going to the logo in the top left and double clicking on it. Select Upload and select wherever you have your logo stored. I want my logo to be changed everywhere, so I'm selecting Yes, Change Globally. SiteJet Builder has looked at the design of my logo and is proposing a color palette to use for the rest of the site. I'm going to select what I want for my primary, secondary, and background colors. I'm choosing to leave the text color as it is. I hit Apply New Website Colors, and there it is! Racco Gym, the Gym for Raccoons website, is now branded. Now that we know the subject of our site, I'm going to change this headline real fast. The next thing I want to do is add some cards. I could choose to scroll up and look for them, but instead, I'm going to use this search tool. I have two different card options here, and I'm going to go with the one on the right by dragging it to where I want and letting go. I want four columns for this part, so if I double-click on the cards container, I will be presented with different options for designing the cards to match my needs. I'll select the column number I desire, and now there are four columns available for this container. Let's add another card to it. We can add this new card simply by duplicating one of the other cards. I want to copy this entire container, so I move my mouse over to the far left and see that I am now interacting with that whole container. To duplicate the card, I hit the duplicate button and my fourth card appears. Let's get these cards set up to match my theme. To change this first image, I double click on the image element to see my options. I'm going to upload a new image. Let's change the headline. I already know what I want to put for the text, so I'm going to go ahead and copy paste that. You may have noticed that I have a filler word, company, here for now. That's because I'll be showing off something related to that later. I'll go ahead and set up the next card on my own. Well, I might have gotten ahead of myself with four cards, because I only had the image and text for the first two columns ready. Luckily, there are some tools to help me. This time, I double-click on the image, and instead of using the Upload button, I go to the File Manager. If I have uploaded any other files or images, I can select those here. But I don't have anything new, so let's check out stock photos. I'm going to search for something that might fit my needs. 
preview it. And since it's going to work for me, select insert. I kind of have an idea of what text I want to be here. And SiteJet Builder has my back with its built-in AI text generator. To utilize this text generator, I just click on the text generator up here. Select the element I'm working in. Describe what I'm trying to write. Choose my word count. Change to a fitting tone and then generate the text. Because I had the specific text box element selected, the AI generated text now shows up in my card. If I want to make changes to this text, I do them in the text element. I've got one final card to complete. I'll knock that out on my own. I'm not a fan of how these images line up, so I'm going to choose to crop these images to match. I can do this by double clicking on the image, choosing the crop button, and adjusting from there. I've made a few changes and now I want to make sure my progress is saved. To ensure your changes are saved, use Control S or hit the Save button here. SiteJet Builder automatically creates a backup every 5 to 10 minutes and saves up to 400 backups. If you want to revert to a previous backup, you can go to the backup section in our side menu here. You can also manually create your own named backups. If you ever want to exit SiteJet Builder without publishing, you can do so here. So, what does this look like for visitors to our page? Let's use the preview button to find out. Not bad. Let's see what it looks like for other devices by using our responsive preview options. I'm going to look at the tablet first. The tablet symbol in the middle here is highlighted purple. That means I am currently in edit mode specifically for tablets. I'm not a fan of the way these columns look on the tablet, so let's fix it. To make this look better, I'm going to change the column setting from four to two columns in the card containers. The word columns is now highlighted in purple. That means that this setting is currently set for tablets. It also affects cell phones if you have not selected a specific cell phone setting. Let's check out what it looks like on the phone. The SiteJet team has recommended settings on our pre-made containers already. In this case, our cards were already set to single column. You can see that the setting is cell phone specific because it's in yellow. I do want to make some adjustments to my spacing, so let's go back to tablet and change the gap on these cards from 2 to 1. See the purple color on the word gap? When I go to the phone, I can see that the gap has changed there too. But because it's purple, I know that the tablet setting changed it. Use these colors to help you remember what settings are affecting your looks. Let's talk global settings. To help keep your site looking uniform, things like text and colors are managed on a site-wide basis. Our design button brings you a selection of settings that are all site-wide. So if you change it here, you change it everywhere. Under text, you can change font sizes, styles, and choose the fonts you want to utilize. You can manage your fonts by selecting the Looking Glass button here. If you want to change the fonts from the template default, you can choose ones from the available Google fonts or upload your own. I'll set Archivo Narrow for my default text and Black Ops 1 for my headline. Because I'm not using them and I don't want to waste space when I publish to my server, I'm going to delete these extra fonts. Back in the design section, you can change your current color settings and add any personal colors that you want to choose. The buttons section changes the button elements you have on your site. Let's add a button and see what that looks like. This button is going to link to our sign up page, so I'll add the text, then adjust the colors I want for my buttons. Then change this link to my sign up page, utilizing the link section in the button menu. I've added a hover animation to the button while adjusting the colors. You can see it when you have the button container open or in preview mode. The layout section gives you options for globally controlling default container sizes for your site. 
That's about it for our global settings. Let's move on to Pages, where you can view, add, or edit other pages for your site. You can control page-specific settings like SEO and name here. SiteJet Builder is a robust tool, so let's look over a few more features you might be interested in. By going to More Website Settings, you can change your website name, logo, favicon, and preview image for search engines. You can adjust your global SEO information in the SEO Settings area. The SEO Analysis tool helps show you how your site is doing in search rankings. The Languages section allows you to set your website for multiple languages. If needed, you can utilize the text generator to help you create your translations. You can go between different language pages using the Pages section. The Collections Manager is where you can interact with your dynamic collections content like blogs. Content Import allows you to scrape your old website for text and images so that you can use them while designing your new website in SiteJet Builder. We also have a really cool to-do tool in SiteJet Builder so that we can track what changes we need when working on our site. For example, I don't really like that these pictures don't all have the same style. So, I'm going to make a to-do to remind me to fix that later. Now when I go to my to-do list, I mouse over an item and it shows me where that to-do is located. Finally, let's talk data. The data page allows you to keep important information the same across your website. Usually, this is relevant for headers and footers, but it also has other uses. For example, remember where I left the word company in my cards? I'm going to update that now by first changing my company name here. Now, I highlight the word company, select the data dropdown, and choose company. Both of those now say my company name, and if I change it in the data section, it changes there too. Well, I think it's time to go live. This site is looking great. My final action is to hit the publish button and let the world be impressed with the site that I just created using the easy and intuitive SiteJet Builder. Thanks for joining me and have fun building.